Hi everyone, my name is Parsa Vahid, president of Strand Life Financial Group. I'm joined today by Shadi Schaefer of Asset Protection and Elder Law Center. I got it right this time. Um, today I want to talk to you guys about a subject that I think is very important in today's chaotic world that we're living in. As we all know, uh, the fear of coronavirus is very real. We're hearing about it on the news. Uh, and I figured, why not bring in a, a very old dear friend um, to help us navigate the, the asset protection, the estate planning of today's world. A little background on Shadi. Shadi and I have actually known each other for almost 20 years now. Yeah, crazy. It is crazy. Just a few years ago, we developed a professional working relationship to kind of coincide with our, our friendship. Um, she is a local uh, uh, estate planning attorney, trust attorney in uh, Orange County. Uh, I've got an office out here in Orange County as well. And I wanted her to come on and just educate some of our viewers on what it is that she does and why it's so important uh, to, to take care of your estate plan. So welcome, Shadi. Thank you, Parsa. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes, absolutely. So I figured we would just make this very casual and just a, a short video talking about, you know, what it is actually to implement an estate plan. Um, you know, I'm funny story. Just a couple of days ago, my, my wife and I were just sitting down and discussing our plan. Luckily, I'm a financial planner, so I kind of took care of these things. Um, I had a child. Oh, we set up our trust. We both have the proper insurance policies in play. But I've come to realize most people, believe it or not, they don't have any of this planning done. And unfortunately, when you don't have it done, it, God forbid something happens, it can be a, a complete mess. And I'm sure you can you know, talk about that as well. So I just want to know a couple things. First off, exactly what areas of, of uh, law do you guys focus on? So Parsa, our firm really focuses in the area of estate planning, but uh, the three areas that I really focus on in terms of my daily practice is estate planning. So drafting different kinds of trusts. And then we also do probate administration. So when people don't have a trust they, or they have no estate planning or they only have a will plan and they have assets and they die, it goes through the probate court system here in California. And I'm embarrassed to share um, probate in California. We're the worst uh, state in the nation to go through probate court. Mm -hmm. um, so we do probate administration. And then we also do trust administration. So when a person like myself puts a trust in place, and let's say I die, and my two boys are going to be the beneficiaries of my trust, there's someone in charge called a trustee. And then they typically work with a law firm like us and how to pass those assets from one generation to the next. So we also handle trust administration as well. Got it, got it. And just out of curiosity, why did you get into estate planning of all the different areas of law that you could have chosen? To be really honest, it was the one and only area of legal practice that I really loved. Um, I really didn't know how to handle dealing with legal cases that I didn't have full control over. And honestly, Parsa, I didn't love dealing with clients when they were going into the court system. Mm. I felt sort of helpless and I felt like, gosh, if I could meet people in the front, you know, proactively, offensively, right. And protect them from, you know, the legal system and the court system, then I think I'm doing a better service for them. So I really saw myself as being an advocate to mm. individuals, families, business owners, and estate planning was where I found uh, my niche, where I really love to, protect families from the court system and from attorneys, if that makes sense. I know that yeah, sounds crazy. Absolutely. How long have you been practicing law? 17 years. Wow. And 15 of those years have all been in estate planning. Got it. Got it. Now, if, if someone were to ask you a very simple question, who needs an estate plan? How would you answer that? That's a great question. And I've been ready to, you know, sort of blurt out my elevator speech, if you will, because, <laughs> you know, in this world, no one's got the time, although we have a little bit more time nowadays. Yeah, right. uh, but basically, if I was in an elevator with someone, I would say, first of all, this is California law. So this, this applies to California residents. Anyone with any real property, if you have a title of a piece of property in your name, you need it to be in a trust to avoid probate. So anyone with real property, a home, any real estate, anyone with a business needs a trust, and I could talk about it more later, why? Anyone with money over $150,000, okay? 
okay? So anything over $150,000 can trigger probate if it's not properly beneficiary designated or allocated in a trust. And then anyone with kids, I used to say minor children, but now um, anyone with kids, or in fact, any beneficiaries, I met with a couple earlier today, they have no kids, but they have nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. And the best way to pass money uh, to individuals is through a trust because they get a lot of protection when it's passed through a trust versus, hey, little Johnny, here you go, here's the money. Got it, got it. I guess my next question would be a question that I myself get when, when I, you know, say my list of services is estate planning uh, and yours is obviously as well. But what would you call an estate plan? What is an estate plan in your terms? No, that's a really, that's a really good question. So here's the thing. Unfortunately, attorneys and the legal system and the internet, there's a lot of terminology to me, to me, to mean the same thing. Just to keep it super simple, an estate plan is also called a trust sometimes or a will plan. So there's a lot of words interchangeably used. Um, but basically, it's a private document. So it's kind of a love letter, right? So the legal system says, hey, you, Parsa, if you don't put in writing what you want in terms of decisions for your body, for your finances, your legal rights, your health care decisions, then the courts we have a plan for you and that plan is not the most exciting plan i assure you so it's just a private contract it's not actually anything that really becomes public it's a private contract that you enter into if you're a single person you sign it you notarize it you keep the documents for yourself it's kind of like your auto life insurance right you get the policy you sign it it goes into effect and then it sits there and until something happens then you utilize it Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing. A trust plan is the same thing. Now, if it's a married couple, the married couple would sign it together, at least the trust portion, and that is signed and notarized. But it's a series of legal documents that's very important to have, but you keep it at home. And when something happens, like when I become ill or incapacitated or when I die, these documents are used to manage me and my life and all that I own. Got it. Got it. Okay. And you know, we always, oftentimes people hear the word revocable, irrevocable, this type of trust, that type of trust. Why a revocable trust? Why do you suggest that usually? <clears throat> okay. So for the most part, a revocable trust is the one document everybody needs. Like most Californians all need a trust. Okay. Are there exceptions? Of course there's exceptions. Maybe, you know, a younger sister of mine that's like 19, she doesn't need a trust at her age, but she would still need a power of attorney and healthcare document. But the reason why it's revocable is the revocable trust is what avoids probate and it manages your assets until you die. Now, I don't want to get into irrevocable trust, but those are more like advanced plans. So um, it's sort of like having auto insurance, but then you get umbrella insurance to add on top of it. It's an extra layer of insurance, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So the revocable trust is what every Californian needs in order to avoid things like probate, a full estate plan. So not just the trust, but the other documents, power of attorney, healthcare. That avoids conservatorships. That entire plan avoids guardianships for people like you and I, Parsa, that have little baby children, right? We need to put guardians in place sure. for our minor children so they're protected. Absolutely. And I know this is going to be a common question, so I'll ask it on behalf of the viewers. What's the difference between a trust and a will? That's a great question. Okay. So here's the crazy part. So a will is like a love letter. Hi, everyone, or hello, world. My name is Shadi, and I own a car, and I've got these assets. Maybe I've got, you know, this property over here or something. I am leaving my things to these two people. And the person that's in charge is my brother, as an example, right? That's a right. love letter. The, what happens, though, is in California, mm -hmm. see, if I have a house or if I have a business or if I have a bank account with $200,000 in it and I only have a will, a will's still going through the probate court. So I'm not avoiding probate. So a will is just a love letter stating what I want, who I want it to go to, who, and I, who I want in charge of it. But a will does not last beyond my life. Whereas a trust is a document that once it's in place, I could transfer my property under the trust. I can actually direct my bank account underneath the trust. And that trust 
will outlive my life and it can continue. So if my children are my beneficiaries, even if they're 10 or eight years old, that trust will last for their lives mm -hmm. all the way till they're adult in managing my home and the bank account under that trust. And also more importantly than anything, avoiding that dreaded probate. And I can get into more details of why. Why do we care about probate? Why should we avoid it? Because that's a super important question. You, I can tell you just this little side story. So my wife and I put an offer on a home uh, late last year. Thankfully, it didn't go through with all this chaos. But the home was owned by the probate courts. And it took six months for us to even go back and forth. It was a nightmare. I can only imagine how it looks like in your world when, when there's multiple assets and probate gets involved. And we all know the government, when, when they kind of put their hands on stuff, it can get messy. So tell the viewers a little bit about why you want to avoid at all costs probate. Okay. First thing you should all know is that probate is a public process. So my, my go-to story is someone like Paul Walker, fast and furious actor. Remember the yeah. young blonde guy, he died no trust plan, no estate plan. And it went through probate. Actually, it was Santa Barbara County. I know this because I was there when, when, it, when his case was being uh, heard one time. He has a minor daughter. His daughter's like super young. And if you can believe it, Parsa, you can look up online every single detail about his estate. Down how many watches he had, the makes and model of the watch, the cars, you name it. So now this young little girl, people can know what's been left to her. First of all, that gives her no privacy or protection. Yeah. The worst of that is when she turns 18, here you go. It's all yours, sweetie. That is crazy. Yeah. How would an 18 year old know how to manage that money, right? Yeah. I don't know about you, but if I'm 18 and I'm getting some money, I'm like, woohoo. I mean, right? We could spend yeah. it a lot you know, quicker. Statistically, 70% of money inherited um, is spent in the first year. It's kind of like the lotto syndrome. Sure. So, you know, it's easier to spend through it. So the beauty, just because we're on that su subject, is if we put it in a trust, for example, my kids don't get their money till they're 25 and then 30 and then 35. Yeah. So I've kind of given it to them in increments to protect them over time. Sure. Um, why probate is also so bad, not to mention the fact that it's public, but it is so expensive and so time consuming. Yeah. So are you ready for this? Right now, um, you cannot finalize or close out a probate for at least a year or two. My average probates right now are averaging about a year, year and a half. So if uh, some of your clients out there, if their parents die and they're waiting to get, sell the house or they're waiting to get the money from their mom and dad's estate from their life, it's literally going to take them a year and a half to two years before they get that money. And then there's a lot of costs. This, just to say hello to probate court on average is about $3,000. Like just to say hello to the court, filing fee, publications, bond. That's not even the cost. If I told you the cost for the probate on just a million dollar property, no, no I'm not kidding you. You will be like, <laughs> are you kidding me? Let's hear that it. What is, is not it? Possible. What is it? Huh? What is okay. it? What's the cost? So let's say my, God forbid, I'm always killing off my poor parents, but let's say my parents passed and they had one property. Okay. All right. So get ready. Cause there's some numbers here. Let's, and the property's worth a million, okay. but let's say they owe the bank 800,000. So their, their, their equity 200 is going to their kids. Got it. Probate fees are based per code. So it's not, the attorneys don't get to decide on what we get to charge. So it's across the board, no matter who you hire in California, it's the same. And it's based on the market value of the asset. So now yeah. probate court's looking at the million dollar property. They don't care about the loan against it. And for just a million dollars, it's $31,000. Okay, I'm not even done. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. $31,000 is what the attorney gets. I'm one of three siblings. So if only one of, only one of us can be the administrator in court through probate. So you've got two people, the attorney and the administrator. The, the family member gets paid too. They get $31,000 also. Oh my goodness. So 31 plus 31, 62, 62. plus another three is $65,000. It's crazy. Yes. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. As you can see, I'm very excited about this. Yes, you are. Yeah. And, and that's what I was hoping my viewers could see. <laughs> you know, I think it's so important. And, you know, before... Before I had a kid, obviously, I wasn't thinking about these things. I was thinking, 
you know, I'm just trying to accumulate as many assets as possible. And, you know, God forbid I pass away and eh, my parents will figure it out. But now that I have a child and I'm sure there's many other viewers who have a child or have a business and they just don't think about these things. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this video raises their alert system and says, okay, there's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot that we can't control, but what we can control is to plan. We need to plan for these things. Another topic that I talk about, kind of my wheelhouse, is life insurance. And a lot of people so with small children, they don't have a life insurance policy. And it truly angers me. I'm, I'm thinking, you're, God forbid something happens to you, you have no idea what type of burden you're going to put on your, your wife or if your wife is the, the breadwinner, the husband, and your kids. And it's a, it, it's a very cheap solution. You can take out a term policy for much less than you pay up for your auto insurance and you don't have to worry about it again. So Parsa, that when people call our office and they say, Oh, a loved one's passed. I ask them two questions. One, is there a trust? Whatever the answer that to that is. My second question is, was there life insurance? Yeah. Here's the thing. It actually, it's not even for people with kids. It could just be a married couple. Mm -hmm. I mean, if one spouse is out of the picture, does, can the other spouse continue paying the mortgage and the bills and all this? In the, in the world we live in today, it really takes two oftentimes to pay those bills and, yeah. and, and, and just manage those things. So life insurance is huge, huge yeah. component to proper estate planning. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and let me mention one yeah. thing too, because I don't know how much time we have, but um, I want to say one thing because people take this for granted. If you're married out there, you need to know something. You do not have the automatic right to make legal, financial, or health decisions for your spouse unless you have these documents we're talking about. Mm, a lot of people don't know that. So I'm going to repeat my, well, I'm going to, I know. I, that's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. So I'm going to repeat that. Kids know kids business. You understand that if something happens to me and I drive home tonight and I get in a tragic accident or I have a stroke or something, or let's take my parents, for example, they've been married for 50 years. My dad does not have the automatic right to make legal, financial, and health decisions for my mom. He has to have those documents that she signed saying, okay, yeah, I want my husband to make decisions for me. Got it. Got it. Fantastic. Well, I think this is, this is enough for just this one video. I, I think we should make many more to educate the viewers. I think it was tremendous information. And for the viewers watching now, if you don't have these things planned for, please reach out to Shadi. Please the contact info at the end of this video. You can always reach out to me. Um, but do your part and get these things planned for. Thank you so much for your time, Shadi. Really appreciate it. I think this was a very, very helpful. My pleasure, Parsa. I hope to come back again and educate more of your clients and contacts. And by the way, we are yeah. doing a lot of things virtually now. So we could do calls, consults. We can even do your estate plan pretty much almost virtually. Perfect. Fantastic. Thanks so much. All right. Yeah, Thanks, Parsa.